In this video, we're gonna run Redis server locally in a Docker container alongside Redis Insight and Redis command line interface. Let's check it out. My journey with Redis started one video ago, and in my previous video I discussed 10 things you didn't know about Redis and listed many of its powerful capabilities most people are unaware of. I'm very interested in understanding and experimenting with Redis capabilities, and this is another video of a series where I am documenting my experience with Redis from a beginner's perspective. Join me in this adventure. In this tutorial you will learn how to run Redis locally alongside Redis Inside to manage its data and how to perform simple CRUD operations. And in addition, we'll also see how we can perform the same operations using the Redis command line interface and how to connect to it from within a Docker container. If you still don't know me, my name is Rafael Delio, and in this channel I talk about software development. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to slap those like and subscribe buttons. And now, let's put our hands in the fire side. Starting a Redis server locally is very easy, and running it with Redis Insight, it's even easier. For running them, we're going to use Docker, and although we're running both applications, I will leave the command to run only the server as well. So as you can see down here, let me try to make it a little bit bigger. Yes, um, the first command is to run only the server, Right, so that's why we're exposing only the 6379 port. While the second command is to run the whole stack with Redis Insight as well. And that's why we're exposing two ports from this container, the 6379 and the 8001, right? This is the one for Redis Insight and this is the one for the Redis server. And let's run this one here. So let me copy and paste this on the terminal. It's saying that it couldn't find the image locally, so it's going to be downloading the image. Okay, downloaded, and it started. So if you do docker ps, nice, you can see that we have our Redis stack container running, right? It's exposing these two ports, 6379 and 8001. And yes, we're now running the Redis stack container locally in our machine let's try to connect to it right so this is the page in redis for all the commands but that's not what we're looking at right now you want to go to this page right here localhost 8001 right at 8001 let's see if we can connect nice it's a starting all right so we need to accept the the terms and conditions for the license now we're in we're in our database so on this side you can see some database stats on this side if you click here on my redis database you can actually configure uh, a username and password and also configure a tls connection and also check some information about your instance such as the modules that came with the docker image right so you can see that we have already the redis search redis json the redis graph and redis time series and redis bloom installed natively in this image so let's close this and in this port you can see the list of keys that we have inside redis right and here you can see the details of this key values but remembering that conceptually redis is based on the key value database paradigm so every piece of data is associated with a key either directly or indirectly. So our first key is going to be of type hash. The TTL, which is the expiration for the key, is going to be empty, which means it will never expire, right? And the key name, I'm going to add my own name here. So let's say just Rafael Deliu. All right, and let's add some fields here. So let's say name and then Rafael. Let's add another one. And then last name and let's say Deliu. Right, and let's say job and software developer. And finally, my age, which is 27. And let's add the key. You don't see the key on this side right away, right? But you can see that it was last refreshed three minutes ago. So let's refresh this side of the screen. Now we can see that our key is on the left side. So we have Rafael de Liu, it's a hash. And you can see the details on this side. So let's say that you want to edit this key. I'm not a software developer anymore. Now I am a software engineer. So now I just updated this, this key. I can even add new fields to it. I can delete fields and I can even delete the whole key right away. 
how can we achieve the same thing from the command line interface? In order to send commands to Redis, we need to connect to Redis command line interface. We can access it by running this command in our terminal right here. So I'm in, I'm inside the server with the command line interface. And let's see what we can actually do here, right? So we already have a key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do hget. And then you see that it already suggests that I have the key and the field, which is pretty cool actually. So let me put a field All right, so it returns software engineer. Let's try to get all the fields. So I'm gonna do a hget all. Right, and I just need to add the key here, right? And it returns everything. So name, last name, job, and age. Right, so let's try to edit this key. And let's do H set. This is this is really cool, actually. Uh Rafael de Liu. And then I'm gonna change my age. I'm not 27 anymore. <laughs> my birthday was right now, and now I'm 28. And let's check again. All right, it changed my it changed this field of the key, right? So now we can see that it's 28 and not 27 anymore. What if we wanted to delete the age? I don't want you to know my age, of course, right? So what I'm gonna do is H del, and then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write the name of the key. And after that, I'm gonna write the name of the field. All right, and let's see what we get now. Okay, so Rafael Delio doesn't have an age anymore. Nice, and what if you want to add a new key so you can do it by running h set right and i'm gonna add here arthur de leo who is my my brother um and i can already add all the fields here as you can see right so i'm gonna name arthur last name oh i forgot you i forgot the quotes all right name arthur last name Delio, right, brother of Rafael Delio, and job being Rafael's brother. Nice, let's press enter. You can see that it returned four because it added four fields to this key. And now let's try to return all of them. So get all, and you can see all of them being added here right so now let's try to delete it to delete it we just need to say del and then select the key i'm gonna delete only my brother all right and now if i do h get all r through the leo what you see is that it's an empty array that this key is not registered there all right and that's pretty much how we do those same things that you saw right there right all right, but what about all the other types that you saw here in this list, right? Because I can add a hash, I can add a list, a set, sorted set. So let's go briefly through each of them. And let's start with the strings. So strings are the most basic kind of Redis values. And they are binary safe, which means that a Redis string can contain any kind of data. For instance, a PNG image or a serialized object, for example, right? The TTL is the, is the same thing, right? So it's a time to expire. We're going to leave it as no limit and here we're gonna add like my string and i'm gonna enter value for this this is my string example i'm just gonna add the key right and you can see that it exists here now and if i refresh on the left side i have my new key on redis as well right and then if you go back to the command line interface you can even do get my key pay attention that this command now is a little bit different from this one right because the h here was referencing that it was a hash while this is for strings right so if i get get my string you can see that it returned my string but if i try to do h get my string it's going to return an error because it's not a hash then we also have lists right so let's add here my list and let's add the first element first and let's add the key and then you can see that we can add new elements to this list right and you can also decide if you want to push to tail or push to head so to the end or the beginning of the list right let's add a second here nice you can see that i have first and second and the index as well 
and if I want, I can also push to the head and I can do like zero. And let's see what I get. Nice. So now the index zero is the element zero. One is first and two is second. Let's add two more elements. So I'm going to add three to the tail. So it's going to have the index three, right? And I'm going to add a new one to the head, which is going to be minus one. And then my index zero is minus one. And then if we come back to the terminal here and we do L range, for example, and then you can do my list, right? And I want to see it from index zero to three. So let's see what it returns. All right, let's do minus one and it should return the whole list. And then you can see all the elements of this list. All right, pretty cool. Let's add a new key, but before let's refresh on the left side so you can see our list here. So ready sets are an unordered collection of strings and it has the desirable functionality of every set. Of course, that if you try to add the same element multiple times, in the end, you're gonna have only one copy of this element within your set, right? Let's see how it works here. So I have my set and then I'm gonna add here Arthur and also Rafael, and let's add these keys. Okay, pretty cool. So let's add someone else here. Let's add Gabriel. Okay, let's save this. All right, so I also added not on purpose an empty string and it was, was saved here. And you can see that the order changed, right? And let's refresh on the other side here now. Okay, so you can see the set, the string, the hash and the list. And now, and now let's try to add a new key here and let's add a sorted set. So a sorted set is very similar to a set, right? You cannot have repeated members, but what, you, but what you have now is a score. So it's actually ordered by a score. So let's say my ordered set, right? And now let's say Arthur and let's add his age here. So he's 30, right? And I am Rafael and I am 27. Now let's add someone else here, Gabriel, who is 25, right? And now if I add this, you can see that I can order by the score, right? Which depending on your, on your use case might be very useful. All right, what else do we get? Do you, we also have a JSON, right? So let's add my JSON here, my JSON, and then all right, so let's create a JSON object name, Rafael, and age 27. So a nice functionality of Redis JSON is that you can actually add it only a single field, right? Or even add more fields here, right? So I could have something like, let's say, test and test two let's see if it works okay it should have the correct syntax pretty nice that's what i was actually expecting so i could add another object within this so name of new object new name all right let's see what i get Okay, that's pretty cool. So now we have another object inside the, the test field. Really nice. Let, let's try to add a list here now. My list. And let's do it like this. Okay. And let's have another object inside this list. And let's say name again. <laughs> Not very creative today. Um, new name and let's add it okay that's pretty cool and i have my list and the first element of the list is name new name is an object with this variable right here okay let's refresh on the left side and we get here our json object my json nice okay so let's add our last kind of object which is a stream Okay, so a Redis stream is a data is a data structure that acts like an append-only log. 
and they are very useful for recording events in the order that they occur right so let's add one here so my stats let's say every entry in a in a stream key needs an id requires an id right and you, and you can see that if we use a star and click here on the information you see that redis will auto generate the id based on the database current timestamp right which is which is what we're looking for right now so let me add um a field here so this is going to be status and then let's say off right so let's add the key okay so you can see that it was off at this time and now let's add a new entry and then statues on right and then statues again and on again right so we have a stream of data where we use the timestamp of the database to check the status of something right that was off and then it was on and then it was on again all right let me let me get this from behind my back oops shit, that red is inside it's kind of heavy oh shit all right stay there okay <laughs> sorry about that all right so in this video we not only learned how to run the redis server locally alongside with redis inside and the Redis command line interface, but we also learned about the different types of keys that we have within Redis and how to perform a few simple CRUD operations. I hope you have enjoyed this video. In my next videos, I'm gonna be bringing more content like this. I'm gonna be talking more about Redis in this adventure that I am going through right now. Uh, so if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you around.